the flowing water of the river Styx, the lush gardens of Elysium, the melting flames of Asphodel, and the eternal chains of Tartarus, all working hand in hand to ensure that all souls that enter the realm of the underworld can never escape. Many have tried, but all have failed. But maybe, just maybe, there is one that can make this journey. Maybe that someone is you, Sagrius, Prince of the Underworld, Son of Hades, and overall good guy, as far as good guys go in the Underworld. Now what do you think? Can you make the impossible possible? Welcome back to the channel. Vama your bro here and in today's video we'll be reviewing Hades and figure out is it worth playing in 2023. Just like our previous reviews we'll be dividing the video into three parts, story, gameplay and replayability. As always if you feel like I missed anything in this video or just want to add anything let us know in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Now let's get right into the video. Hades is a roguelike video game both developed and published by Supergiant Games. It was released back in 2020 for the PC, Mac, and Switch platforms and was later released for current and next-gen consoles in August 2021. Now other notable releases from Supergiant Games include Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre, all of which are great recommendations. To see if Hades makes the list of great recommendations as well, let's start the review with its story. gods and to assert yourself for this i have employed the greatest of the greeks or what became of him the story starts with a chill but humorous character called zacharias prince of the underworld with such a title you'd think he'd get along with his dad Hades, basically the king of the underworld but no apparently you control Zagreus on his journey to escape the underworld. The Olympian gods and other supernatural beings catch wind of this and offer Zagreus their help in the form of powers that increases battle prowess. Most of the time that Zagreus accepts these powers, the corresponding god has something interesting to say to him. And over the course of my playthrough, never did I see dialogue repeated. Now that's an accomplishment for the game genre where repetition is a key mechanic in the gameplay loop, but we'll talk about that later. Voice actors did an amazing job with the delivery of the dialogue and they really bring out the unique personality of each NPC, not just the main gods of the Greek pantheon. My warlike brother Ares reached you, didn't he? I've always found his conduct quite disturbing. At least it seems he's helping you for now. What, really? Come on, what is this, Zagreus? You think handing this to me makes up for everything you've put us through? Ah, you wield Koronach, the Heartseeker. It pierced three titans in one shot back in the war amongst our kind. Please do take care of it. The story just mainly revolves around Zagreus trying to escape the underworld, and as you play, you'll unlock dialogue from NPCs and the areas you visit that let you dive deeper into the game's lore. At one point, Zagreus even finds a deeper goal to push him in accomplishing the impossible task of escape. I'll leave that for you to find out as you play the game. There's a huge cast of characters in this game and all are fleshed out really well and there aren't any trash NPCs that were put there just for the sake of being there. Each NPC has a purpose and can help you in one way or another. On the surface, the story may seem shallow, but the game does a good job of connecting you with the characters that you get invested in finding the little tidbits of lore and piece them together to grasp a better understanding of what's really going on during your attempts at freedom. Now as you get more proficient with this game and start getting deeper and deeper into the levels, you'll figure out that the story isn't actually just one-sided or it's not just a straight line. There are things hidden here and the only way to unlock these things is to repeat the game over and over again. Now what I like about this is that the repetition is actually built into the game. It's not just because of the game genre. This makes it so that it doesn't feel like it's just another run. Each time you repeat, there is progression in the story. But I'm not going to get into that because that's going to be a huge spoiler for this game. 
just know that there's just more than meets the eye to this game. This thing has an iceberg thing going on for it. But for now, that should be all for the story. We'll now move on to my favorite part, the gameplay. Being a roguelike game, the gameplay is its bread and butter. Hades plays in the isometric camera view with 2.5D models. The main gameplay loop is, you try, beat enemies along the way with your weapon of choice, gather powers and resources during the run, die, return back to the starting point, spend your resources to help you get further in the next run, rinse, and repeat. As far as I was concerned, there was no dedicated tutorial whatsoever. But the game did an exceptional job at introducing the game mechanics in the first few runs of the game. The tutorial is built into the starting levels of the game and never felt like it got too complicated as to steer away from the core gameplay. It had the perfect balance of letting the player figure out the mechanics and handholding when absolutely needed. Now sometimes NPCs also give dialogue that are masked as fun conversations with Zagreus but are actually hints on game mechanics you can apply in your runs. Before each run, you stay in a safe hub called the House of Hades. Here you can strike conversations with various NPCs and build the relationship with Zagreus. Some areas are locked at the start, but begin to unlock as you progress through the game and spend resources. After the main hub, you reach Zagreus' room. Here you can spend Darkness, which is a resource you use to obtain and upgrade powers that will help you during your runs. The final room you enter before starting your run is essentially the loadout room. Here, Zagreus will choose his weapon of choice to use for the next run, choose one trinket to bring with him, and choose to upgrade a weapon with rare resources once you've unlocked the capability to do so. Located here as well is Skelly. Skelly is an NPC that serves as a training dummy to test out your weapons and combos and be more comfortable before setting out. During your run, you'll quickly figure out that your weapon has a normal attack and a special attack. Each weapon has a unique playstyle to it, so no two weapons will ever feel the same. You have access to 4 weapons at the start, but unlock 2 more for a total of 6 weapons available. You also have access to a dash, which is used to dodge incoming attacks and reposition when needed. Finally, you have a cast ability, which is a relatively stronger ranged attack but uses up ammunition. To refill your cast skill, you have to pick up the ammunition by killing the target you threw it at or dislodge it from the said target. As you progress, you'll notice that you gain rewards every time you clear a room. These rewards could range from resources to upgrade the hub or Zagreus, increase your maximum life, or the most notable of them all, accept a boon from one of the Olympian gods. This is where the build part of the game comes in. Boons from the gods have effects exclusive to that god. Zeus with the lightning bolts, Artemis with increasing crit chances, Ares for bursts of damage, and so on. These boons will effectively change either your normal attack, special attack, cast, and or dash in more ways than you'd expect. Not only this, but they also grant passives that can be combined with other god boons to create a satisfying number of combinations of effects, passives, and powers to help you break through the challenges of the underworld. The enemy variety in the game is good. Each enemy is different enough from each other and requires slightly different tactics when dealing with them. There are four different levels that you have to overcome, and each level is made of a series of rooms that are semi-procedurally generated which means there's a good amount of different rooms, but play enough and you'll start to notice some rooms repeating. This never felt too repetitive though, nor did it take away from the fun of clearing each room. Not only does each enemy have a specific moveset, but each area has its own set of gimmicks as well. I won't spoil them here, but as soon as you step into the levels, you'll get a good grasp of what these gimmicks are. These add to the challenge of the game and personally made it much more fun and satisfying to clear. Except for Asphodel. Fuck that place. Bosses are amazing. They serve as a real test of your accumulated skill that you've gained throughout playing the game. Once you get the hang of the game, you slowly gain confidence in yourself and notice that the bosses that were once a challenge are now child's play. 
Not so much due to the upgrades you bought, but more so on the skill that you've developed as a player. Now that, for me, is what good boss design looks like. Additionally, the music that accompanies these challenges really capture the feel of the fight. Not too frantic as to mess with your focus, but not too timid to ruin the mood. Unfortunately, for all the boons of the gods and upgrades to Zag and his weapons, you will inevitably die. And when you do, you're transported back to the House of Hades and are able to interact with all the NPCs present there once to check the new dialogue they have to share with you. From there, you set yourself up for another run and rinse and repeat. Now that's it for the gameplay. Moving on to replayability. Replayability with this game isn't an issue of will you play it again after beating it, but it's about how long can the game keep you hooked per session. And there my friends, Hades does a wonderful job. The gameplay loop is quick, fun, and challenging. It doesn't swarm your screen with bullet hell levels of projectiles, nor is it too relaxed as to just mindlessly hack and slash your way through. Each room is a challenge to overcome and it's satisfying to know that with each clear, there is always a sense of progression. I was able to finish one whole run of Hades in 15 hours of gameplay, meaning I finished from the start of the game to beating the supposed last boss. Never did I feel tired when playing the game and I constantly had the just one more run thought with each time the game bested me. I knew I could do it and the game gave me the means to accomplish it after every run, slowly but surely. The game's quote unquote final boss, now I'm not really sure here, is predictable yet satisfying. Beating them really felt like an accomplishment. An accomplishment that I wanted to repeat over and over again. Now there are 6 unique weapons in the game and a vast number of upgrades and god boons to pick up with each run. No two runs will be the same since the room configurations will change and RNG for powers will keep your mind running in terms of optimizing your build for that specific run. The game has an insane amount of replay value and even after beating the game once, I had a strong feeling that there was much more to come afterwards. And so now we've come to the conclusion to know if Hades is worth playing in 2023. And if you haven't guessed it by now, well then, it's a definite yes. If you're a fan of roguelike games, then Hades will definitely give you your money's worth. Story seems simple on the surface, but dive deeper and it gets really interesting. Gameplay always stays fresh with new combinations to be experienced every run. Tons of replay value and dialogue that makes the characters feel alive. Even if you're not into roguelikes and just want to try one, I would greatly recommend Hades as your introductory game to this genre. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel a lot. Let me know in the comment sections below what you think of Hades. Will you give it a try? What's your favorite combo of powers? Have you played long enough to actually hear repeated dialogue? I'm excited to discuss all these and more with you guys. As always, thanks again for watching the video. Have a great day ahead. See you in the next one.